The following movie has been rated R by the Motion Picture Association of America. It is intended for mature audiences. Parents may wish to consider whether it should be viewed by children under 17. Tyler, you were clinically dead nine months ago. But you survived. You fought your way back. You just have to find out why. We got a contract. You were the client's request. Tyler? I'm getting you out of here, okay? You told me to find the reason I fought my way back. Let's find out. It's the 10th year of my movie month 30 movies, 30 days Movie month, movie month 30 podcasts, 30 days Movie month, movie month 30 movies, 30 days 30 podcasts, it's year 10 It's a Saturday evening and I'm here talking to you about another movie. Welcome back to Movie Month, everybody. It's June 17th, 
And you know what that means? That means for the 17th day in a row, I'm here talking to you about a movie I've never seen because for the seventh day, 17th day in a row, I watched a movie I've never seen. I did that backwards, and I didn't realize I did that backwards until it was too late. But there's no going back. There's no editing. This is it. This is what you get. Uh, so I have no idea what's going to happen from here on out, but I think I'm going to pretty much talk about today's movie. Extraction 2. Yesterday, two movies premiered in the world. One premiered in the theaters, and well, I guess it was Thursday for Thursday night premiere previews, and then one premiered on the uh, Netflix. I was going to say your television, but your phone, your tablet, your your um, Apple Newton, your TV, anywhere you could be watching Extraction Two. Now, I was a couple years late to Extraction, yet it was always on. Like the list, I said, "Oh, I want to watch that. I've heard that look. That looks good." And now I've heard it looks good. I should watch that movie. And then I finally did. Uh, and that was just last year. I said, "Oh, geez, that's really good. I really, um, I, I like this." It was another like John Wick kind of thing where it's man goes in, kills a bunch of people, kills a bunch of bad guys uh, with incredible, incredible action. Can get shot. Can miss a that can miss a thousand bolts can miss him and it, in in the end the good guys win and uh i am all in for that kind of movie so i was excited that extraction 2 was coming this time i was ready for it and the day it premiered i went and watched another movie but the next day which is today i said damn it this is the movie of the day and that's why i'm here today talking to you about another chris hemsworth movie in, in this one he's you know he's he's australian again um, but he doesn't like he doesn't get excited. It's so funny because in the in the Thor movies, he can he can play dark, he can play deep, but then he gets so excited about things and very happy about things. But in this movie, he's just down here all the time. You know, the, I I might smile, but it's it's hard to do. Uh, and that is Tyler Rake. And I will I, I've now I realize that this is the closest. Thing to like a John Wick type thing that Netflix has and they're going to keep going with it because if you saw the end of the of this one if you watched it now it just came out yesterday so there's a good chance many of you haven't seen it yet but if you um, did see it you saw the end and you realize oh I'm gonna spoil it by the way um, you saw the end and you thought okay they're gonna keep going with this and they're kind of what are they? They're expanding the world, which is you know what we saw in John Wick. Every time we saw the world, it got a little more expanded. Now, what I who I didn't expect to see in this is a man named Idris Elba. When I saw him, I said, "Oh, damn! What's he doing here?" And then I thought, "Is he going to be like his his point man?" And really, no, he wasn't. He's kind of the guy who com- comes in and says, "Here's the job." And they. I don't think they said a name. Now, there's a name for him in the credits. I'm going to tell it to you right now, so get ready to be spoiled. It doesn't really matter. Alcott. There you go. Oh, no, now you know. I have no idea if that means something, because I know this is based on a graphic novel that was, you know, it's written by Joe Russo, the movie. But it's based on a graphic novel by Andy Parks, which is um, with a story by Andy Parks and the Russo brothers. So... Even though it is, I wonder if this was written as a graphic novel to show, look, this should be a great movie. I don't know. I, I don't know the details. And maybe I did last year. Maybe I talked about it last year. But I have no idea uh, if that's the case this year. And I'm not going to even look it up. I'm just going to speculate, which is what I'm, I'm one of my great talents. I'm very good at speculating and guessing. Uh, but this movie, it's they're not the deepest movies, and they don't need to be the deepest movie. Movie. So the last time we saw the guy was left, possibly left for dead. We don't know what's going to happen to him. But I think we thought, okay, he, there's a chance he's alive. Well, he's alive. And, I mean, we're only like 20 minutes into this movie. He goes from, you know, they, they pretty much pick up exactly where he's left off. They find him on, on a shore. And they they get him in, an, in a helicopter, bring him to a hospital. And he's doing okay. He's still got his team. The brother-sister team, they're back. Uh Nick Khan, not to be confused with Nick Khan, who uh, is a big uppity up in um, in WWE. This is a female Nick Khan and Yaz Khan, the brother and sister team, who are in the last one. 
And I remember, I'm like, I remember them from the last one, but I don't remember. I remember them being in it, but were they there a lot? I remember them on the bridge here and there. I wonder how much of the team, I wonder. I say I wonder like I don't know, but like I forget how much they were part of the team last time because you feel like it's one guy doing stuff. But in this, even though it's the focus is Chris Hemsworth, uh, these the, the brother and sister, the team, the team um, do a, get a big part in it. Uh, and, you know, we you watched it, right? So you know what happens. And it seems like half the movie I'm thinking, oh, the brother did, survived the last one for some reason. I thought maybe he didn't make it. And every time I saw him, I thought, oh, is he going to go? Are they going to – is he – are they going to kill him off? And they eventually did. And then I thought they were going to kill the sister off. Then I thought they almost killed the sister off, but she's okay. And you realize at the end they're arrested. What are they arrested for? Because these people are mercenaries. They're hired to do jobs. They'll break laws. They'll they'll cause property damage. They'll be a nuisance, public nuisance, uh, which, you know, is at least a citation, if not, you know, years in jail. Uh they're brought in to do a job. That's what it was last time. That's what it was this time. What's the job? The job, the job is extraction. You ha- they have to extract someone. This time, we're watching it early on. We're like, okay, I think this is, we know who this is going to be. There's a br- there are two brothers who run a Georgian, not Atlanta, but the country of Georgia, a Georgian crime empire, drugs, guns. Um, fake tattoos. I don't know why I said that. They're real, very well. They had fake tattoos all on their face, which are becoming like just the norm now, I guess. Uh, but it was almost like they're specific gang tattoos. Uh, they're like Negrani or something like Negrazzi. Uh, and the guy, the, be, to appease the Americans, one of the brothers got caught doing something, and to appease the Americans, they were put in prison, even though they pretty much uh, run the country. They still had to m- make it look like. There was some, you know, actual law being being um, being done, uh, and when the head guy's like, "How you you added another ten years to his to his or another years to his sentence?" He's like, "He threw a man off a bridge." He's like, "Well, that's not how it's going to work. We have to get him out." And so we we meet the main brother who then kills this uh, politician. You realize, okay, he's a bad guy. He's got to get his brother out. But the brother is hiding in prison, and while he's there. He needs to keep his family safe, so his family's in prison, too, as a gift, they said, from the, the Georgian governor or whatever. They brought the family into the jail, and he keeps them there so that he can keep an eye on them because they're rival gangs. And they all want to kill each other. Uh, you know, it's I knew the, I knew that life when I was in high school. I was on the bowling club and the chess club and the bowling club. We just did not get along, so I completely understand. Um, so, but the problem is, is this family, he abuses, he beats up his wife. His kids look like they just—they just, just kind of—they haven't seen the sun in weeks or months. The 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 girl, the woman, wants out of this life. She wants out of this relationship. She wants to escape her her family. Boom! There's um, bring in Tyler Rake, bring in Nick and Yaz, and there's the team. But usually, Nick and Yaz come to Tyler and hire him. This time, someone came to a Tyler. So first of all, he he goes to uh, to. Uh, jail. He, uh, not to jail. He goes to the hospital. He gets all cleaned up, fixed up. They they give him a house in um in where the hell was it? It was someplace, but it was it was a nice house. He's got his dog still. Um, he just kind of hangs out, and he's slowly you know getting better here and there. Uh, and then all of a sudden he comes home one day, and there's Idris Elba. He's like, "Hey mate, I want to hire you for a job." Um, uh, but I think I forget who he said. Oh. You'll do it if I tell you who I don't want. I'm not part of this anymore. Well, I'll tell you who who it is you're going to be working for. Um, I don't know if he told them that or not, but it turns out he's going to hire uh, Chris Hemsworth to get these people out of this prison. And it just so happens that this is Chris Hemsworth, his or, or Tyler Rake's former sister-in-law. He was married to the sister. Now I, I looked it up, and the sister wasn't in the first movie. She's in this one. She's in. Uh, she's in a. Um, the, his ex-wife. She was in. A uh, Bond movie, hubba hubba. I, and I was like, oh, I forget. Did they bring up the wife in the first one? Was there a storyline of a, of a son who died? I don't remember, but it is in this one. And we see that he had, you know, he had a son who was sick and died. And he left he left them behind to go, because he couldn't face them, to go you know, back to, to serve his country. At the same time, that, that pretty much ruined his, wet, his, wife, his marriage. 
but he's going to, you know, for duty, he's going to go and he's going to uh, uh, save them. So then we get a Rocky Four montage of him in the him in winter in the, in the snowy weather, you know, getting, you know, slowly but surely uh, kicking ass, beating the hell out of firewood, pushing snow, uh, p- putting rocks on top of rocks, all kinds of stuff like that. And then he's like, already, already it's like, boom, ready to go. He calls up the brother and sister. He's like, oh, I've got a job for you. You're going to do it. It's like, I come to you for the jobs. You're, usually, well, he, 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 you know, too bad. You're going to work for me or we're in. Okay, we're in. Whatever. Who cares? So they, I mean, pretty quickly, it's like we're, they're right in for the job. Let's go to the prison. Let's get them out. And, it, you know, lots of action happens. And then you get the, just the tremendous uh, action set piece, the the thing that this movie should be known for and remembered for. Um, I don't know if it was like 20 minutes or so where it, I realized, because I knew it was going to happen, but I didn't know when. I knew there was a train involved. And I knew the the um, the thinking is it's a one shot. It's a wonder, as they say in the biz. Now, I'm almost convinced there's no way this was a one shot, but it was so it was so well done that you that in part of the fun for me is to try to look for where the breaks might be, uh, where the edits could be. And I'm sure and like I think I found some, you know, and, and with digital now and, you know, a quick move of the camera, that's enough to to blend in and make a new shot. But it was basically done as it was basically looking like one long shot from at one point when they're in the prison, getting them out um, to following them out of the prison to killing the guy, the, the, the husband that, you know, I thought he was going to be one of the major villains, but they kill him uh, pretty quickly. They, uh, Chris Hemsworth and the, and the ex-wife, they get the kids out, but one of the sons like, dad, I want my dad. No, he's saying it in his language, but I, I don't speak Georgian. I think it was something like dad, I want my dad, but in a different language. Um, so they get the kids out, they get out, and then it's like, you know, it's, so it's funny because you're like, well, how do we follow this? It's what they do, and it's really cool how they do this, is at some point they'll follow, the camera moves out of the prison, follows them, and then someone is going back into the prison, so the camera follows that person, that's how you get back to Chris Hemsworth and stuff. Really friggin' great. Then there's this big, giant um, prison like uh, yard fight, and I'm thinking, is that the same prison from Stranger Things? I don't remember. Uh, this, you know, is Netflix using the same sets? I don't think so. I don't know. But um, a huge battle of that with that going on. Just all kinds of stuff. Like dozens of people now. I don't know how much of it's digital, but it seems like there's at least dozens and dozens of fights and battles going on this prison fight. But, you know, all for the purpose of these two people that need to be on camera and people coming in and out, getting shot, getting beat up, you know, getting uh, smashed by Thor. It's just... Um, it was really well done. They and they escape, then they follow them into a train, and then it goes even crazier with the train uh, because you got people coming on the train. You got you got a helicopter landing. People, you follow the guy, people onto the train, and the camera goes in and out of walls. So it's it's probably digitally done, but it still was so such a kinetic, awesome. And you think it's over, and then it's like you, you see someone looks, so the camera looks, and like oh no, there's another helicopter. I mean, so many helicopters are being shot down by machine guns. It's wonderful. So they get them eventually. They have to crash the train. It, the shot finally ends when the train freaking crashes. He's like, all right, mate, the, the brakes don't work. Everyone gets secure. It's like, what are we going to do? He's like, oh, I don't know. It's going to – and then, boom, the, cra- the train crashed, and he went flying. It was like, whoa, it came out of nowhere. Um, there were a few shots in this where I was like, oh, yes. Yeah. like they're in a weight room, and he, um, he kicks the, the weight. So the, there's a squat machine that basically just smushes this dude. I love it. Um, so, okay, they get the family out. They get them to um, a nice hotel where everything's nice. But here's the, here's the, one, thing that, the one thing that bothered me in this movie. So, um, you know, I have a pretty pedestrian phone. It's a low-end phone. I had a nicer phone. I broke it. So I'm in, like, in-between phones, I call it now, with this crappy Samsung that I have that was just I needed a phone. And I look forward to replacing it with a better phone, hopefully, over the summer. But... Even to get on my phone, my crappy little phone, using Metro by T-Mobile, I have to, you know, type in a uh, a passcode just to get on the phone. But in this movie, these people are mercenaries with the most secure phones. The guy has a phone attached to another phone that looks like a satellite, like I don't know. And the son picks up the guy's phone when he's not looking, goes into the bathroom, and quickly calls or texts or whatever, contacts his uncle. 
and he, he tells them, Uncle, what's going on? They took me. Where are you? Where's my dad? Um, that's the man. They, they killed your dad. That's the man who killed. Oh, I think he already knew by then. Um, but he says, you know, where, um, uh, you know, where are you? Where are you? Tell me where you are and I can get you. I can get you out. And the kid obviously spills the beans. But it, it bothered me that it was just like the guy didn't notice where his phone was. That, because he still didn't notice till later. And number two, that he was able to just use the phone. It should have locked up at least at least once, if not every time, unless he unless he grabbed it right before it, it it went to sleep. So that part, very minute. But he could have just he could have just said, you know, they could have thrown in something where it's like, lock your phone. He's like, ah, no one ever touches my phone. I hate I hate having to type that passcode in. And boom, there you go. That's it. But then again, if you set that up, then you're like, um, oh, uh, oh, that's obviously you know the. Um, the uh, Chekhov's gun or whatever it is where I almost said Schrodinger's gun, Chekhov's cat. But that's um, that's a thing where, oh, that's a setup for later. So I just have to accept the fact that he was able to get on the phone. It, it just bugged me for a second, but it doesn't really matter. So they call them there, and, you know, um, this kid was blaming Tyler for the, bur- the murder of his father, but he looked at, you know, at one point they're having a moment. He's like, you know, um, your mom's going to need you. I don't, I, all of a sudden, I don't have an Australian accent. Wait a minute, let me try to get it back. Um, Wallaby. All right, there it is. It's back. I just got to say Wallaby. That's the key word to get me back into the Australian accent. He's like, Wallaby. He says, you know, your mom's going to need you. Um, you did whatever he was saying. You know, your mom wanted to get get you away from him. The way he was treating her in front of you. The things you saw, the things you didn't see. I know, mate. Um, and then all of a sudden he goes, the kid's like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And this kid, he looked familiar. I thought maybe he was, he looked like a young Sigourney Weaver at some point. Some point he looked like the the sibling of this of this girl who's on the that, that terrible show that I for some reason still watch um, La Brea, I was like, what? He just reminds me. Then he reminded me of maybe on on um, on uh, stri- um, Arrested Development, um, but he's like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. He's like, what, what are you sorry for? Uh, and he goes, he knows where he, he knows where we are. You see a helicopter coming off in the distance. <clears throat> and I thought we were going to start seeing a, a missile coming at him, coming at us. And he had to dive out of the way. But he's like, everybody get down. No, I, I lost it again. Uh, Wallaby. He's like, everybody get down. Uh, so they, they're, you know, getting shot at, but they, they jump. They they dive for safety. Luckily, these these helicopter bullets, you know, they'll go through everything, but they won't go through your, your kitchen island. So you're safe hiding behind a kitchen island. So... That gets leads to more fighting and leads to some great, cool, like, um, s- ceiling stuff where you're on the edge of a glass ce- ceiling and you're trying to fight and hanging and, and all kinds of excitement, which then leads to um, they get away again. And this time, but they have the son. The son gave up. He went. He ran off to be with the uncle because at one point I was like, you know, the son caused hundreds of people to be killed. He should be in jail, uh, and he just – I almost was like, I don't care what happens to him. If he gets killed, it's, it, I don't care. That was uh, like a teenage boy, and I, I, was, I was saying this. And that, that, I felt rotten, but my goodness gracious, he was annoying me. So um, they – do they get the brother back at this point? No, they, they don't get the brother back till later. So um, they get back to his cabin, and there the guy calls him. He's like, I don't like – you know, uh, the fact that you're still alive. Now, it could have been over, but he's like, all right, mate, I'm going to come get you. Murto, I'm coming for you. So he's like, meet me at the airfield. So he shows up with his awesome, like, grenade-launching gun. It's like, thunk, 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 and then just bang, 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 all these all these uh, the helicopters are blowing up, and it leads to an awesome fight. Oh, no, and he shows up uh, in, a, in a church, and inside the church, um, He's got the kid strapped up to dynamite or, you know, explosives of some some kind with a cord. He's like, we get the whole thing, shoot your, shoot him. Uh, but he doesn't shoot him. Then all of a sudden the girl who we think, oh, I forgot to tell you, that during the train, no, during at one point in the building, the brother gets killed of the friends. The sister uh, almost gets uh, whacked. You know, she almost dies, but she comes back later. Uh then she almost dies at the prison, but the three of them end up taking out uh, the main bad guy. The main bad guy was good. I kept looking him up saying, why is he familiar to me? He looks familiar, and I don't know him from anything, but he just has this face that looks like a bad guy and a badass, and he has he had... Now, he was deaf, and you, you didn't know why, but then it looks like it was because his dad beat the hell out of him and smashed his ears, but he definitely looked like he had MMA ears, so I don't know if he was a fighter or something in real life, if those ears were real. I don't know, 
But that's the one reason I never got into MMA. I like my ears too much. Uh, so they end up fighting each other, and it's a good fight. And then he's like, I'm never going to stop. And boom. And then he just, they're lying on the ground, and Chris uh, T- Tyler just shoots him right in, the, right in the head. And then it's over. And then, but now they're arrested because, you know, one thing Idris Elba said is don't get caught. And they got caught. And then at the end, he's like, um, you know, do you want to get out of prison? How are you going to work that? Well, what if you do another job for us? And he goes, uh, oh, I don't know. I only work with my team. He goes, I thought you'd say that. And then, boom, we see his, uh, the girl, um, uh, Nick. She's back. She's, she's back in. So the two of them are in. Maybe I just will join them. No, he's too big to, to be a third on the team. And then um, he's like, wait till, you, wait till you meet the guy I work for. He's a, he's, he's a wild son of a bitch or something like that. So we're like, and that's where it ends. So it's, it's basically just, here we go. Here's the setup for the third movie. So all in all, uh, I'm just going to finish up here because I want to get this done and out to you so you can share it with the world. Um, all in all, really enjoyable movie great action pieces great looking action as well like it just even when you know it's digital or you assume it's digital it looks so good lots of helicopters being shot down just i just thoroughly enjoyed the action of this movie the story was fine the story doesn't have to be anything like whoa what twists and turns doesn't matter at all the characters were good the villain was good I thought it was going to be the villain brothers. It didn't end up being that way. It was just the main guy. He was very menacing, very believable. So I enjoyed that. Uh, and now I'm ready for him to have another adventure. I love, I'd say I love these adventures like um, John Wick, Jack Reacher, just the guy going around, showing up, kicking ass and, and killing everybody and moving on, doing it again. Uh, now, uh, Tyler Rake does it for, for money. But hey, everyone's got to earn a living, right? Right, I mean, come on. Uh, so, two, two, you know, uh, muscle, muscle bound thumbs up, as muscly as my thumb can get. And um, that's it. That's it. Saturday night is done. Seventeen days down, thirteen days to go. It's weird because, like, you'll you'll get at the eighth day and you'll be like, oh my god, I still have twenty two days to go. And then it's just you hit that fifteen day hump or that 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 you know that that peak. And all of a sudden, you, you start going downhill, and you're like, oh, 17. Well, wait, I still, have, I still have 13 movies left. But then you're like, oh, man, I only have 13 movies left. I better choose the right 13 movies. Um, and it, ultimately, if I don't, you know, ultimately, whatever I choose, I'm happy with. If I miss one, it's only because I wanted to watch a different movie. It's not because I didn't want to watch a certain movie. It's just at that time, the movie that I wanted to watch, I wanted to watch more. And today, I wanted to watch Extraction 2. And I did. And tomorrow I want to watch. Well, you're just going to have to wait until tomorrow to see what that movie is. Also, I haven't fully d- decided yet. But you'll, you'll know tomorrow. Uh, so anyway, uh, listen, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Mastodon.social at Geek Mentality. The podcast, of course, is called Geek Mentality. You know that by now. Uh, and the website is fansnotexperts.com. We have a Facebook page. It's Fans Not Experts. Not a lot of people go there. Uh, but I appreciate those who do. Todd, thank you very much. And um, I think that's that's really it. So uh, until tomorrow, my friends, thank you for listening. Thank you for subscribing. And Wallaby, here is my theme song. This is my podcast. I made it. Geek Mentality is what I named it. And I think you should listen and subscribe Cause I'm kinda funny and awesome I think that I'm worth your time And I'm kinda handsome My mom says Please listen and Please subscribe At least listen to this episode That's not experts